Hey guys, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. I am standing at just one of the many tented areas at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. And of course, I'm walking around having a great time seeing all of the stuff I don't have, plus new items, so it is absolutely a blast. So thank you so much for being part of my adventure, and let's go see what we find. Yes, there are more than a few people at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and some kind of crazy outfits. <laughs> it's a ruby, looks like a hazoacite with it. Beautiful fluorite. Huge fluorite fan here, so. Of course, I'm a huge fan of the copper minerals, malachite and azurite. They're so pretty. And the sulfur crystals back there are gorgeous. Grape agate, I still want to get one of those. <laughs> they have beautiful quartz crystals here, clear, smoky, terminated, barite roses, all kinds of stuff. Quite a few different sulfide minerals here, and they're actually surprisingly reasonable priced for collectors. Then you get some kind of your ordinary stuff, just regular iron stained quartz crystals. They're still cute though. Huge booths with just tons of stuff. Enormously sized quartz crystals and everybody was really, really had a huge variety of quartz crystals this year. These looked like the type you get from Arkansas, but I wasn't sure. For some reason this year, I was a big fan of the egg shaped, smoothed out and polished minerals. I wanted to find me a really cool zoocyte and ruby one, but I just kept looking at everything. I was enamored. There was so much to see. It was almost overwhelming. Wow. This is labradorite. These make great countertops. These are vanadianite crystals. There's tables of it. That's right. I do wish I would have actually looked at the pricing of these amethysts while I was there, but there was literally so much going on that I forgot to go back and see. And I'm kind of kicking myself for it, but oh well, there's next year. This booth had some great looking stuff though. And it was really cool to meet this guy. He's from Montana and he mined sapphires, my favorite gemstone. Now for those of you asking if they had fossils, yeah, they did have fossils and this thing was freaking huge. So there's a big old T-Rex, this gigantic plant thingy. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but it looked really cool. Okay, so the sign said that these teeth are mammoth teeth. I don't see that very often. It's botryoidal lapidolite. That's really neat. Oh, that's cool. And when I say the giant booths were everywhere, seriously, they were all over the place. And each one had something just a little bit unique about it. And this place had some pretty common stuff. Again, they said that all of these crystals were from Brazil. It kind of looked like stuff that I definitely already had. Back inside after I'm already blind. Oh. 
deep purple. Uh, it's so pretty. The wholesaling tents that they had were quite enormous. Not necessarily something I'm going to buy from, but still really cool to see everything that they had. I just felt like my brain was exploding with how many minerals were everywhere. But if you've never been to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, it is an amazing place to go and find stuff. A lot of shop owners and arts and crafts people go here and find amazing deals. Oh, my love for the amethyst is strong. In the amethyst? The warehouse here is huge. And it keeps going like gigantic in every freaking direction. This is insane. It's like way too much to look at and I've already been walking around most of the day. Haha, <laughs> it's so much. So I don't know all of your guys' age ranges but these things seriously remind me of the Langoliers. You know, the Stephen King movie with the things that attacked you at the airport. Anyways, I really, really wanted one, but they wanted an arm and a leg for them, so I wasn't going to get one. And then these little geode bowl, like, almost hidden jewelry box things, I absolutely loved them with the little crystals inside. And they had such a wide variety. I would love to find one of these banded agate geodes all on my own. That would be amazing. Someday I'll go to Brazil, I guess, and find one. Or maybe I'll get lucky in the States and find one. Who knows? <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, the blue agates with the amethyst inside. I was freaking out. I totally should have got one. Oh, and that's a lot of mica. And just look how big this freaking warehouse is. It's gigantic. But honestly, the prices weren't great. So this is muscovite and aquamarine, also known as beryl. I was gonna get one of these here, but the guy just kept wanting more and more money. Now these quartz crystals and chalcedony with zeolite and apophyllite were really beautiful. And again, I should have bought one of these too, but I didn't and I was kicking myself. And honestly, I'm not exactly sure what those little blue crystals were called, but they were beautiful. That is some awesome looking zeolite crystals. The chalcedony branches with the apophyllite crystals and the zeolite on them were stunning. This place had some really gigantic carvings. You could tell they were extremely proud of them, but it was awesome to actually just look around at them. Look at how pretty that rose quartz is. That took quite a shine, which is amazing. And that big giant rose quartz ball, I would have one in my front yard if I could. Look at that. And these were pretty neat. The carvings in the quartz with the lights underneath of them. They were quite beautiful. You start to look at everything around and you realize just how many minerals there are out there. And some of them are not in great abundance, even though it might look that way. People still have to go through a lot in order to pack them up, move them around, get them to this show. Pretty impressive. I want one of these giant purple things so badly. Those giant amethysts, I need them. Now I will say, one of the things that really bothers me about the gem show is the people that sell everything by the kilogram. Now, sometimes it's awesome. It can be great prices occasionally, but for the most part, it's not that great. 
Because half the time you're not buying just that mineral, you're buying whatever is also attached to that mineral by weight. And then the other thing that really, really bothers me is when there's no price on them whatsoever. Maybe I just wanna browse and know what prices they already are, so if I wanna spend something or maybe barter with you to get a lower price, there should be a price tag on it. Plus, I shouldn't have to walk around and try to drag somebody over to this corner of this part of the table so that I can ask them what the prices are. Anyway, small rant. These quartz crystals have some really awesome phantoms in there, and the phantoms look to be pyrite. Oh, more amethyst. I love crystals with phantoms and inclusions. I think they're fascinating and it's awesome that they grew around a different something or mineral. Oh, and these big clusters of quartz crystals. Now I have to say, these are my favorite. Someday when I'm severely wealthy, I will be buying one of these giant ones. Look at the multicolored calcite. Holy crap. I am the biggest fan of the amethysts that have oh these God. gorgeous calcite crystals in them or other beautiful minerals growing inside. Next, we come to the things that are in glass shelves. Most of these pieces don't even have prices on them. Some of them are really spectacular, some of them are meh, but much better than anything I have. But the tourmaline and the quartz, perfectly formed quartz crystals, aquamarine with those mica books, oh, they're so beautiful. And then we have beautifully giant aquamarine slash barrel crystals. Now this whole booth area was all museum quality stuff. Oh, and those scepter crystals, my gosh, that tourmaline. Everything in here was super gorgeous and super expensive. And look at the fluoride back there. And some of it I hadn't even heard of before. And they were hella expensive. But beautifully perfect specimens. Look at the sulfur crystals. And the fluorite. And the bright pink tourmaline, oh my gosh. Some beautifully green apatite. And an awesome phantom quartz. And then this is a huge feldspar crystal. Holy crap. And some of these quartz crystals were just gigantic. And look at the overgrowth on them, oh my gosh. Some people call it etching, but it's actually overgrowth, where a new crystal is trying to form. This is a huge quartz bathtub. Look at this place. This place is really cool. This is just one tent of stuff so far. Oh my god. Another gigantic tub and huge crystals. Whoa. <laughs> they are almost wings. <laughs> this one, it's got two colors, two, two different types, which is awesome. And then this guy. <laughs> it's been carved, but this is one solid piece. It's awesome. And there's a chain. <laughs> And I caught the crystal collector in the background of my video. part during shipment. Most of these giant amethysts like this come from Brazil. <laughs> Here's the crystal collector himself, so I had to go say hi. He was very kind. I guess I can't help it. I'm the biggest nerd when it comes to these giant amethyst geodes. Oh, this would be cool. Oh, amethyst tree. Oh, I bought one. 
<laughs> so after looking around a little bit more, I got the nerve up to ask the people how much they were. And they said, oh, well, they're sold by the kilogram. And they were about 60 to $70 per kilogram. And a kilogram is 2.2 pounds for those that didn't know. So yeah, I didn't get one. But what I did get is this. These were my beautiful take-homes. We have Apophyllite with Zeolite, a really small ruby and zoocyte, a giant amethyst crystal, some vanadianite crystals, Peruvian calcite that glows pink, fluorite crystals, a lapis egg, some kind of fossilized tooth, and I don't remember what it is, a pad corundum crystal, cobalt, and cordite. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you had fun looking around the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show with me. And here's to hopefully coming back next year.